As Native people, we come from a history of historical trauma and the after effects or transgenerational trauma, including problems with alcohol and drug addiction and family, domestic and sexual violence are still felt in our communities today. Many Native communities are looking to traditional teachings, ceremonies and practices as a way to help heal from these traumas and grow into healthy, balanced, individuals, families, and communities. One of the cultural activities that many members of Native communities are drawn to are powwows, whether by spectating, supporting singers and dancers, or participating in the singing and dancing, many Native people feel a deep sense of pride in this beautiful example of their culture. A lot of Native people feel strengthened by participating in powwow and feel healing taking place. Powwows can also be a way of educating about traditional values and teachings that include the sacredness of the circle and all it represents, respect of elders, the importance of including everyone and every age, valuing our warriors, giving away rather than receiving, and the importance of our relationship with Creator and prayer. Many positive aspects of traditional cultures can be found at powwows, and there is much to learn about. In this area of Turtle Island, powwows originally were held in the late spring or early summer, after maple sugaring and before berry picking. In order for tribes to make the best use of food resources, there was a need to break into smaller family groups from the late summer, early fall until the late spring. Each family group had their own berry picking, wild ricing, winter hunting and fishing, and maple sugaring sites spread out so that there would be enough resources for all. Then, in the late spring or early summer, the whole tribe or nation would come together again for the large gatherings that modern powwows have evolved from. It was a time for people to visit relatives, to sing and dance, to gamble and compete in traditional games, to renew old friendships and make new ones. This was also the setting where young people had the opportunity to meet and court. Families would also hold ceremonies like namings, honorings, and memorials, among others. After being isolated for a large part of three seasons, these late spring, early summer gatherings were much anticipated and celebrated. We see many of these same things still going on in the powwows of today. It is important as we begin to learn about powwows that we take time to listen to what our elders have to say. We sit down with Bonnie Claremont, a Ho-Chunk elder, as she gives us some of these teachings. I was raised in, in and around powwows ever since I was born. And that, um, that tradition started even before I was I was born with my parents and their parents. So I come from a long line of Powell people. And so it was just a natural progression for me to um, find a partner that also went to Powell's and, and to uh, bring our children up that way. And we brought them into the arena, into the Powell circle in the right way. Every time uh, they were going to dance, we would have um, other like adult dancers bring them in, have a song sung for them. It was a way of um, introducing them into the arena, but also introducing them to the Powell people as their relatives. And they were told and taught that, you know, these were going to be their relatives. These were going to be the people to look after them and maybe advise them if they needed it, if they were doing something wrong, or encourage them, or teach them, or... So it was kind of a way of introducing them and kind of initiating them into that, into that circle. So we also taught them about the rules and the etiquette around powwows, that there are some protocols as a young girl, a young girl and also a young young boy and as they grow up there's protocols even in terms of how they you know how they are how they behave in the arena you know we've always taught them that 
they shouldn't be in there running around and being disrespectful like that. And even in terms of the kind of songs, you know, they they got to learn the different kinds of songs that are sung in there and to be appropriate, you know, not if they're doing an honor song, not to be running around and being disrespectful or dancing all wild. So those that all comes along with teaching children about being a good a good power person and their outfits even, how to take care of their outfits, you know, how to put it on, which which goes on first and you know, how to take care of them when they, you know, take them off and put them away that, you know, they shouldn't just throw everything in a bag and, you know, because something could get, could get damaged, especially their feathers. You know, we always taught them to take really good care of their feathers because they're, they're sacred. And again there, you know, we had people who put the feathers on them. They had to go through a ceremony before they could um, wear feathers. <clears throat> So knowing that, you know, they, they knew that they had to have a lot of respect for their outfits and, and for their feathers and to take care of them properly. One young man who has decided he wants to learn about powwows by learning to sing on the drum and also by learning to grass dance is Isaiah Cleveland. Isaiah lives in St. Paul, Minnesota with his family and is able to attend powwows both in the city and on the nearby reservations. He is of Lakota and Ho-Chunk tribal affiliations. Isaiah's family is very supportive of his wish to learn about his traditional cultures. They gather together to help him make his grass dance outfit. Working together like this emphasizes the traditional value of family and shows Isaiah that his family loves and supports him in learning about his culture and also in doing something healthy and positive for himself. While they work on his outfit, the family has a chance to talk to Isaiah about how he needs to carry himself in a good way, both when he dances and away from the powwow arena, as he will be a role model for other native youth and an ambassador of his culture. It will be important for him to stay alcohol and drug free and to practice nonviolence. The family and Isaiah have chosen the Lower Sioux Powwow or Wachipi as the place where he will come out as a first time dancer. In preparation, a young grass dancer named Brad Downwind has volunteered to teach Isaiah to grass dance and to share the teachings that go along with that style of dancing that Isaiah will need to know. It's important to know where his style of dance originated and the things he should and shouldn't do as a grass dancer and as a young native male dancer in general. The other activity Isaiah wants to learn is singing on a powwow drum. He has joined the drum class at school and has asked two respected elders, Jim Claremont and Scotty Brown Eyes, to give him the teachings necessary to be able to sit at a drum. It is very important to get the correct teaching so that Isaiah is participating in a way that is healthy and not causing harm. Well, that drum, you know, the sacredness of it. The, you make drumsticks. Someone makes drumsticks to have a talent to make draw these drumsticks. And we had a person that way on our group. And he made drumsticks for each one of us. And we used them. So, and at the same time, they told us that. Said, because you're hitting that drum, it's a sacred drum. With that drumstick, that drumstick becomes holy as well. And then you're holding it with your hand, with your arm, and you're using your arm to hit that drum. So part of your body, they're part of your body, all that, it's become sacred because that's the way that drum is. So the teachings of that is that don't ever, ever use your stick to hit your child. Don't ever do that. Or either that, said when you're married or girlfriend, whatever, said. Don't ever use your hand to hit, hit, hit a woman. That's the main things that they taught me. You know, so I stuck with those teachings. You know, I, I did that. 
And sure, today I really feel good because I never ever hit my my mom, my sisters, my aunties, my grandma. I never ever hit my dad either. So I'm really proud of myself for doing that, for listening. That's what I was told. So I did all those things, you know. So those are the protocols. Then, likewise with the, you know, the protocols of everything, the things that we do, you know, they're good. You treat them as such, and you you do them. You know, it's going to take you a long ways and enjoy. Then you can even make relations too. Some some tribe will adopt you. You know, take you as a son, as a uncle, grandpa. You know, that's how it is. It, it, it gets good. You know, and then the, when they have their powers in their state, they'll call you and invite you. Hey, come on up. Come up to the power. You don't have to worry about a place to stay and eat. We'll take care of you. That's how it goes. So, you know, all these things that are, it happens in a good way. So enjoy it. You know, enjoy all these things. You know. It's all good. You know, but it's us that make it make it the negative way, and the evil way. You know, we shouldn't be doing that. You know, so we try to you know learn from each other. It's all good. I said I got a brother out there who was dancing. I said, how can I, how can I help him? I said, sit down. He pulled up a chair. I thought he was going to talk to me. Now you got to do this and that. I sat down. He had to be a drumstick. He said, here. I told him I don't know how to sing. I said, learn. He said, that is how you're going to help people. He said, he said this drum, that song, he said, it's going to help people. He said, whether it's through sorrow, whether it's through happiness. He said, because Lakota people, he said, from the time that they are probably before they were born, there is a song for every step of the way up until they journey into the spirit world, he said. He said, so you're not going to never learn the whole, you know, all of them, he said. He said, that's why you have a drug group, each of them, or that's why we have different drug groups. Somebody's going to know some of it. So that was, that was how I got my start from singing. After the preparation has been completed, the big day arrives when Isaiah is ready to come out as a first-time dancer at the Lower Sioux Wachipi, or powwow. His family has arranged for the ceremony and they have asked his teacher, Jerry Dearly, to speak for Isaiah. Then an honor song is sung as two seasoned grass dancers escort Isaiah into the dance ring. His family dances behind him to support him and the community comes out to shake his hand and to honor him and welcome him into the circle. He will be expected to carry himself as an honorable young man from this day forward as someone who will not use violence to harm others or taint himself with alcohol and drugs. It is a proud day for Isaiah and his family after much work and learning has gone into preparing for it. Just as there are teachings for boys or young men who want to learn about singing and dancing at powwows, there are also specific teachings for girls or young women. One type of women's dancing that is held sacred and danced for the healing of the people among the tribes in this region is the jingle dress dance. There are important teachings that need to be given to someone who wants to learn this style, as there are teachings for every style of women's powwow dancing. Cheryl Whitehawk, an Ojibwe woman who has danced in a jingle dress for many years, shares some of these teachings. Jingle dress dancing is a form of power dancing that originated with the Ojibwe people. About 100 years ago or so, um, an Ojibwe man had a daughter that was very ill and she was dying. He had a dream that um, he needed to make a certain kind of a dress, a dress that was made with cloth with um, metal cones on it, and that he should put that dress on his daughter. She should dance with it and she would be healed. He did what was asked of him in the dream and his daughter was healed. And jingle dress dancing ever since has been uh, 
very important to Ojibwe people and become very popular all around uh, Indian country in the powwow circuit. But there is a difference um, to jingle dress dancing that's very important. It is considered by Ojibwe people to be sacred. The dress is a medicine. The act of jingle dress dancing is a healing ceremony. And so for those that want to start jingle dress dancing, they need to know that there are teachings that they need to understand about jingle dress dancing before they start. Jingle dress dancing does not involve high kicks, twirls, or dancing backwards. Jingle dress dancing does involve always keeping one foot on the ground, um, dancing in a zigzag manner. And we, it's very important that we don't dance backwards because the act of dancing is a ceremony towards healing and we don't want to undo that healing. For those that are really interested, young women or um, adult women who are interested in starting to jingle dress dance, they should um, approach um, a jingle dress dancer that they admire or respect that's experienced and offer them tobacco and ask them to teach them um, what they need to know to start dancing. There are teachings having to do with how a dress is made, how a dress is cared for, and like and how you should dance or not dance. Um, those are really important things to know. We've mentioned how there are traditional teachings to be learned at powwows. One dance that teaches us about the healthy roles of men is the buffalo dance. During the buffalo dance, the dancers simulate what our brothers and sisters of the Buffalo Nation have to teach us when they are threatened by an enemy or predator. The children and the old ones are placed in the center of a circle. The females run clockwise around them. The males run counterclockwise to confuse the enemy and are on the outermost part of the circle to take the brunt of an attack. Their role is to protect the females, old ones, and children. They do not harm or abandon, they protect. Sometimes when you see men dancing opposite or counterclockwise at powwows, it is to represent this traditional teaching. There have been more efforts to promote healthy life ways around participating in powwows. One such effort is the creation of 100 Wellbriety drums that were made for 100 Native communities who are committed to ending family and sexual violence and drug and alcohol use. Henry Fox from White Earth, Minnesota is the drum keeper of the first Wellbriety drum that was created. Here is a message that he has to share about using our traditional practice of singing with the drum to heal and stay healthy for our Native communities. have to, you know, know uh, what the drum is all about, what you can do with that, you know, on that drum and uh, off that drum. But the big, I guess, the big message I'd send out there is, you know, sobriety, uh, being sober, singing on that drum, you know, because the words you're singing are prayers and stuff, they're coming out of your mouth and when you're using or whatever, you know, there's going to be mixed messages coming out while you're singing. And, uh, and your messages aren't going to go out there as prayers, you know, they're just going to go out there. And what I was taught from uh, being, you know, a drum keeper with being on the drum was uh, it don't matter how you sound, how it comes out of your mouth. It comes from here, it comes from your heart. Uh, and that's the big part, you know, of, you know, being, if you're a good singer, you're a good singer. If you know the words, you know, you know the words, but uh, just being, you know, uh, no matter how you sound, you know, it's what comes from your heart. Another effort to promote wellness and healing at powwows is the Women's Solidarity Shawl Project. 
Solidarity shawls are red shawls with purple and teal fringe. Red represents native people. The fringe represents the tears of native people. The color purple represents and honors the victims and survivors of domestic violence, and the teal represents and honors the survivors and victims of sexual violence. Native women survivors wear the shawls together at powwows and other events to bring attention to the issues of violence against Native women and to take the shame away from being victimized. It also helps the women gain strength and healing through dancing together in solidarity with other survivors and supporters and sends a message that violence against Native women will not be tolerated. There are many teachings and many different traditions around powwows depending on where you come from on Turtle Island. Those we have shared with you are only a few, but we have tried to highlight the positive impact and influence that healthy powwows can have on us, and that there are many opportunities for teaching, healing, and celebration of our Native culture. It is one of our traditional activities that truly needs to be kept alive and the healthy teachings that go with it.